I can't believe the test is already tomorrow, that it's already May. Um, so I wanted to take a second and have a pep talk with my class since I won't see them before the test, except for a few that are in my class for testing. Um, I apologize for my voice. I've actually been sick this weekend. Um, didn't have a voice at all yesterday. Um, so I hope this quick video helps you and makes you feel ready for the test. If you have any questions, feel free to email me um, tonight or before school tomorrow. Um, and I'll be more than happy to help any way I can. Just a quick reminder, we need to get at least eight hours of sleep tonight. I know I will um, eat a healthy breakfast, something with protein. Um, do not stress out over this test. You are well prepared. We have worked all week making sure we hit those concepts we thought we needed to refresh. Um, I know you can do this. You'll do great. Um, bring snacks in. You'll be allowed to eat those during the test. Um, just make sure they're not anything messy or loud. And also remember to bring water to drink. Um, staying hydrated is important for your brain. Okay, here's some quick tips for during the test. Most important, remember you can do this. Every question is something you have seen before. It may have been a while, but somewhere in your brain, there is that knowledge. You just may need to take your time, think it through, and you will get through this problem. Always read questions twice. Make sure you are answering the question that is asked and not a question that you want it to be. Eliminate wrong answers. That'll make the test a lot less stressful. Check all calculations, especially multiplying and dividing and adding and subtracting since we do not have a calculator. It is so important that you make sure you check your calculations. Line up those decimals when you're adding and subtracting. Make a list of questions to check over at the end. Um, use your reference sheet. And remember, take a deep breath. You have plenty of time. Do not rush through this. Let's take a quick look at the reference sheet so you know where everything is that you might need. So you notice we have the area formulas. We have the triangle, one half base times height. Remember, the height has to be vertical. It cannot be leaning. Um, rectangular parallelogram formula is A equals base times height, um, which also covers squares and rhombuses. And then we have the trapezoid formula, which is A equals one half base one plus base two times height. Remember, your base one is on top and your base two is on bottom. And on this one also, the height must be from base one to base two in a vertical. And then we also have rectangular prisms where V equals BH. Remember we talked about this big B actually represents the area of the base. So for example, in this um, rectangular prism, you have five times 11, your base is a rectangle. So you would have 55, and then you would times it by the height of 6. But another way to remember this formula is V equals length times width times height. You will only be doing rectangular prisms. Um, so you don't have to worry about any other base formula. Also, remember when you are measuring that you need to start at 0 if they are asking for inches. Do not start at the top of your reference sheet. Start at 0 when you are measuring. So this is the second side of your reference sheet. This is the side where you will find all of the conversions you will need for the test. You probably will use only one or two of them, um, but just so you know, if they ask a question about gallons or they ask a question about miles or kilometers or centimeters, this is the place to look. It tells you how to change one from the other. For example, if I have one foot, that's 12 inches. So if I had three feet, I would have to do three times 12 to figure out how many inches. Okay, and this works for every type of measurement that is shown on here. I want to take a few seconds and look at some problems and some key strategies that you can use during the test. So the first thing I notice in this problem is that there are positive and negative numbers. And I also notice that I probably need to highlight that they want them in order from least to greatest. Um, so the first thing I notice is that ties is the highest amount, so that is the greatest amount. So I can already eliminate two answers, A and C. Now I have to 50-50 shot. B and D both have shoes as seconds, so the only difference now is between watches and pants. 
So watches is at negative three tenths percent and pants are at negative one and one tenths percent. So this tells me that if I'm looking for the one with the greatest value, it would be the negative three tenths, a less negative number. So my answer would be B, watches. The reason I picked this problem is because I wanted to remind you that all fractions are division problems. And that is the goal of this question is to see if you understand that and how to read that. So just a quick reminder when you are reading this, you read from top to bottom. So three divided by, that's what this line stands for, by 12. Okay, and remember, if I wrote this, the one on top goes in the box and the 12 would go on outside. This was also one I just wanted to talk about real quickly um, when we're talking about percents. Remember, percents can easily be written as fractions and decimals. So for this one, 40%, I could write that as 40 out of 100 because every percent is out of 100. And I could simplify that to see if any of the fractions worked. So for example, I know that 10 goes into both of these, so I could go down to 4 tenths. And then I know that two can go into both of them, so two fifths. So you can see the answer is D. But if I wanted to change 40% to a decimal, all I would need to do is move a decimal twice, and it is four tenths. Or as you could see, it's also you could think of it as 40 hundredths, like this fraction is telling you. This question I wanted to remind you about our friend PEMDAS. Um, parentheses go first. Exponents are next. Division and multiplication go from left to right, and addition and subtraction also go from left to right. So in this problem, the first thing you would need to take care of is your parentheses. So I would rewrite the entire problem except for the parentheses. So 5 minus 2 is 3, and I would go ahead and put that back in a parenthesis. Then I need to take care of my exponents. Remember exponents, 3 to the 4th really means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I know this is 9, and this is 9. So 9 times 9 would give me 81. So I have 81. And you can actually go ahead and do the 2 to the 3rd as well, which 2 to the 3rd just means 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. And then times 3 minus 60. Now, I check my list. I've got parentheses, I've got exponents. Do I have multiplication or division left? I do, I have eight times three. So eight times three is 24. Now I have my multiplication division. Now I just need to add and subtract from left to right. 81 minus 24 is going to give me 57. And then I have 57 minus 60. So remember, when you have a bigger number that's subtracting, your final answer is actually going to be a negative. So I have a negative 3. On this question, my one quick reminder was the word equivalent and what parentheses also can mean. So equivalent means equal to. And then the parentheses in this problem actually means to do the distributive property to multiply to everything inside. So if I wrote this out, I would multiply 3 times x, which would be 3x, and then 3 times 6, which would be 18, which would give me the answer D. So in this question, we're looking at unit rate and multiplying it to figure out amount. So they're saying steaks cost $6.10 per pound, but they're going to buy 2 and 3 fifths pounds of steak. So Instead of me actually multiplying the 2 and 3 fifths times 6 tenths, I'm actually just going to multiply 6 tenths times 2 to start off to see if I can eliminate answers and make this a little easier. So just for 2 is $12.20. So that automatically eliminates two answers. So now I have a 50-50 shot, and I didn't even have to really use my fraction. Now if I look at my fraction, it's 3 fifths. That's more than half. So I know that I'm going to at least add more than half. So if I think of what is half of 6 tenths, 
So if I half that would be $3.05. That would give me $15.05. So it couldn't be $14.03. So I got C. Without even using that fraction, I could solve the problem. And one last quick reminder is the inequalities. Remember, inequalities means not equal to. So you have a greater than, you have a less than. You have a greater than or equal to, you have a less than or equal to. So these are both open circles because they don't equal that number. These are closed circles because they equal that number. So that could help you eliminate two answers right now. So they're wanting you to solve 12B is greater than 180. So I can eliminate A and B because those are equal to problems. So then all I would have to do is divide by 12 and think B is greater than 15. So the only one that shows me that B is greater than 15 is C. Well, that's my quick tips for your test tomorrow. I know you are all going to do great, and I can't wait to hear about how awesome you did on the test. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. I thought I would leave you with it. Always remember you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Um, good luck tomorrow if I don't see you before the test. Um, you will do amazing.